So you have a comic book collection and now you got to figure out a way to keep your book stored. Stick around and I'm going to give you some tips on how to store your comic books. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Comic Misfit. My name is Pedro, and today I'm going to walk you through some ways to keep your comics stored so you don't have any problems in the, in the long run with your books getting ruined, getting dirt on them, or getting bent. The bag and board are the essential part of any comic book collection. The elements will ruin your comic books. That's right. The air that we breathe actually ruins the comic books that we have. So having your comic books safely secured in a bag and board like this will keep it from getting ruined in the long run. As I mentioned, comic bags are probably the most important part that you need to have in your collection. You can find a pack of 50 like these at your local comic book shop. Any, anywhere that sells comics has these bags. These are essential. Usually they go for about six to seven dollars for a pack of 100. And they are the essential start for your collection. Over time, your comic book paper will turn yellow due to the oxygen that we breathe. This is why it's imperative that collectors have their books safely secured in a board and a bag so those things don't happen to your book in the long run. Now, there's two different types of bags out there that you can consider grabbing for your collection. There's the regular poly bag, which like I mentioned earlier and I showed it to you here, is the one that ranges for about six to seven bucks and it comes with a pack of 100. These are the cheaper option, the easiest option, and the one that you'll probably see in every single comic book shop that you go. The standard poly bag can last for about three to eight years with before needing to be changed. However, I change mine about every year. I take a look at them and see the difference and see which ones need to be changed. Over time, you'll see the comic start looking a little, the bag start looking a little loose, looking like there's some bubbles in it. That's when you realize that there's oxygen and acid build up in that bag and you need to replace that or else your book like i said earlier is going to get ruined because of the oxygen so while there is the option for poly bags the if you're a serious collector and you're trying to get and you have some more older comic books in your collection maybe some silver ages or even some golden ages in your collection what i suggest is not put them in poly bags because those will get ruined my suggestion is to use the other option i'm going to share with you right now which is comic book mylar bags these bags are very expensive but they're very much worth it these are actually archival bags that you can put your comic books in they are thicker and more rigid than the regular poly bags and once you put a book in there you're never going to need to change it out because it's not a regular plastic it's not going to bubble it's not going to rip it's the perfect way to keep your rare comic books your key comic books your silver or even golden age comic books protected for life. Fun fact, mylar is also the type of material used in the United States Library of Congress to keep their important documents safe. So if it's good enough for the U.S. Library of Congress, I think it's good enough for comic books. And it makes a lot of sense why we have these types of bags in the market right now. I personally only use them for Silver Age books and maybe a few keys here and there. But the bulk of my collection is usually in poly bags because they're cheaper. You can grab 100 poly bags at a local comic book shop for about 6 to $7. Whereas you can get a Mylar package that comes with 50 Mylar bags for $25. So just make the math. It's a lot more expensive to keep your books in Mylar. Some people keep all their books in Mylar. I'm not one of those people. I rather just use the Mylar for the very, very important books that are expensive or very important to me personally. And everything else I have, I keep in the poly bag or else... It's just going to get really expensive really, really soon. Now, another thing I've learned in my years of comic book collecting is the different sizes of bags reflect the different age of comic books. So if you're starting out and you're buying books that have been publishing, being published right now, chances are you're going to be grabbing a current size comic book bag. Current size is from 1980 to the present. So if you have any books bought between 1980 and now, you need to grab your a current bag. No, don't make the mistake I did. When I started, I thought golden meant better. So I went and bought a hundred pack of golden age size bags and boards, and I haven't used any of them. There's no use for them because I don't need that. I don't have any golden age size books. 
you know, if you're looking for Silver Age books, those are books that were released between 1950s and the 1980s. If you have any of those books, highly suggest grabbing bags and boards of that size, the Silver Age size. And if you have any Golden Age books, those are any books that were printed before 1950. They also have their own different size. They're a lot larger than the regular comic book. And those are the ones that you need to grab if you have Golden Age books. Now, some, some collectors like to have a looser fit on your comic book, which means there's more white space in between the edges of the book. Personally, I enjoy having them a little more tight. The only thing you need to keep it, keep an eye out on is that if it's tighter, you got to make sure the book isn't bending because then that's going to ruin the integrity of the book as well. So when it comes to collecting comic books and keeping them protected in bags and boards, the, I highly suggest beginners to go to a local comic shop and grabbing a hundred uh, the 100 pack of poly bags again they're cheaper they're more affordable and you get more bang for your buck you get a hundred bags to go to your 100 books and the same thing for boards boards comes in packs of 100 so they kind of go hand in hand if you're going to grab mylar for regular books from the current age that aren't worth anything it doesn't really make a lot of sense in the long run so i highly suggest grabbing regular bags and putting your books in them. Now, if you have, like I said earlier, rarer books, then yeah, I would make the investment for Mylar because Mylar is the best way to keep your books protected in the long run. But if you're just starting out and that's why you're on this channel, you're trying to learn more about comic books, the best way to go about it is to go with the poly way. Now, I highly suggest going to a local comic shop because they're gonna help you a lot. But if you don't have a local comic book shop around, I wanna put some links in the description below of where you can find these bags and get them shipped right to you. I hope you found those tips on bags and boards informative. I know for me, when I started co collecting comic books, it was very difficult to realize which ones to get. And I wasn't really finding a lot online about it. And so that's why I wanted to share more with more people on how to start their comic book collection. I remember when I started, I had this, a bunch of books. I did not know what to do with it. And I just, I, I just put them all in a bookshelf and I kind of ruined the books because I didn't have protection on the books. I didn't have poly bags. I didn't have the backing boards to keep them protected. And so at the end of the day, I ruined them. I bent them. I, the spine got messed up. Knowing what I know now would have been very helpful when I started. So that's why, again, like I, I said this last time, and that's why one of the main reasons I started this channel, I want to help the people coming up on this journey of collecting comic books. I want them to have the advantage I didn't have when I started. So if you're watching this right now, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe, follow the channel, and check us out on Instagram at the Comic Misfit. You can also check out the podcast I have called Comic Misfits. Check out the website, comicmisfits.com, and you have all that information there. And next time, I'm going to talk about ways to store your comic book, not in a bookshelf. So today we talked about where to put them in a bag and a board. Next week, we're going to talk about the boxes and different types and different sizes that come and what you can do and what's the best way to keep your collection safe for a long time. So stick around for next week's episode. Thank you so much for, for following and for, for subscribing. And I'll see you guys in the comments. And don't forget, life is lived in between the panels. Take care now.